I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this video will cover all of the 24 books available in Dead Rising with information on where to get them, what they do, and their practical applications. This will contain minor spoilers for certain psychopaths and a few story elements, but nothing major. Most of the books are available from the various bookstores in Willamette Park View Mall, but some require being unlocked through main story progression or optional scoop events. Books are great, they can give helpful bonuses and you don't ever need to fear losing them. You can just drop them when you're done, and they'll go right back to where you originally found them as soon as you zone out of the area. The best way to break these 24 books down is by organizing them into types. Photography boosters, zombie killing bonuses, healing bonuses, survivor related bonuses, weapon durability bonuses, and a couple of miscellaneous books. Let's start off with the Weekly Photo Magazine. This is found in Paradise Plaza at Contemporary Reading. Conveniently, this is directly across from the door to the warehouse. You'll be passing by here all the time. The Weekly Photo Magazine gives you a visual indicator over zombies' heads to tell you the type of photo you'll get from snapping a shot of them. Throughout the main game of 72 hour mode, it holds no real value. This essentially does nothing, as it doesn't really matter what you're taking pictures of for bonus PP, except for a few erotic moments. Hubba hubba. However, the weekly photo magazine becomes significantly more useful during overtime mode when you're forced to gather queens. Zombies who have mature queens will always have a green indicator for outtake. This can make it significantly easier and faster to spot queen zombies than without the book. If you're ever on the lookout for queens, this book is very helpful absolutely pick up the weekly photo magazine during overtime mode. Next up, let's look at the three books that increase your PP gains from photographs. First is the Camera One book, and this is also found in Contemporary Reading in Paradise Plaza. This gives you a 25% bonus to PP gains from photographs. Next up is Wartime Photography. This is in Everyone Loves Books in the Entrance Plaza. This also gives a 25% bonus to PP for photographs. Everyone Loves Books is locked and only becomes accessible after the morning of day two when you're doing the story cases. If you ever miss out on the story cases, it'll stay locked for the duration of the game. Finally is the Camera 2 book, which is located outside Columbian Rose Masters on the second level of Paradise Plaza. The Camera 2 book will increase your PP from photographs by 100%. This is only available on the third day, and only if you've completed all of Kent the Photographer's challenges. There isn't much practical usage for these photography PP increasing books, unfortunately. On the night of day one, when there's nothing to do until the morning, you could snag the Camera One book and use it for a slight PP bulge while taking erotic photos of Jesse or Sophie. Camera Two just comes too late in the game. If you're still scrounging for PP gains during the final day, you can collect the Camera One, Camera Two, and Wartime Photography books for 250% PP from photos. You may be able to get some value from these books if you haven't hit level 50 yet, and still have PP stickers to photograph around the mall. If during the course of the game you manage to rescue Cheryl, you can quickly snag all the books for more gains from Cheryl's photo op event at the end of the game, but other than that, there's not much practical application for these books. They just become available too late in the game. At that point, there are far more lucrative ways of farming PP. There are two books that give you PP bonuses when you defeat zombies. Each book provides a 25% increase to your PP gains from killing zombies. Every 50 zombie kills will net you 500 PP. So with one book, you'll get 625 PP, and with both books, you'll get 750. The Horror Novel 2 can be picked up first. This is in Backman's Book Porium in Paradise Plaza. The Horror Novel 1 is found in The Sinister Read in the Entrance Plaza. There's one very obvious use for these books, and it's when you're going for the Zombie Genocider achievement to defeat 53,594 zombies, which just so happens to be the population of Willamette, Colorado. Completing Zombie Genocider will also unlock the real Mega Buster when you finish the game and move on to New Game Plus. If you want the easiest time possible in Dead Rising, you can start by doing Zombie Genocider. Start off simply by doing the introduction sections and then entering the mall. Now head to Backman's Bookporium and pick up the horror novel too. Now exit Paradise Plaza and cross through Leisure Park to the food court. You can now defeat, or skip, Carlito and run through Alfresca Plaza to the entrance plaza. Now head to the south end of the entrance plaza to the sinister read on the second level and pick up the horror novel 1. 
Now you'll want to double back to the food court and then leisure park. With both horror novels in hand, head up to the parking lot and get into the red sports car. It's time to start the zombie genocide. You'll want to accomplish this by driving around in the maintenance tunnels to rack up a huge kill count. Start by heading to your left and driving until you reach the dead end. Now get out of your car and switch to the box truck and drive all the way back and zone out. Then jump back into the red sports car to start the process over. You can take a quick pit stop and grab the maintenance tunnel key. This will let you zone up to Paradise Plaza and it takes you right to the restrooms to save your game whenever you need a break. Then you can use the white sedan to drive back to the box truck to restart this process. If you're starting at level 1 on a new save file, by the time you reach the 53,594 kills, you'll be around level 35 with the two books. The difference between two books and no books for this isn't huge, but if you're going for zombie genocider starting from level 1, you may as well get as much PP as you can get. This is really the only scenario where these books are worth holding on to. During standard play in 72 hour mode, they're simply not worth the inventory space. There are four books related to boosting the effectiveness of healing items. First up is aptly named Health 1, which gives an extra 50% healing from eating food. This is available from Sir Bookalot in Wonderland Plaza. Next up is Health 2, which also provides an extra 50% healing from eating food. This is available from the Sinister Reed in the Entrance Plaza. Third is the Survival Book. This provides 100% extra healing from eating food. The Survival Book is only available in the North Plaza in the locked store next to Chrislip's Home Saloon. You'll get the key to this store by beating Cliff in the Scoop Hatchet Man. The final book related to healing is the Cooking Book. Cooking will make the effect of mixed juices like the Quick Step last twice as long. The cooking book is in Everyone Loves Books in the Entrance Plaza. Once again, this is locked until you face off against the sniper and the cases on the morning of day two. In practical terms, for 72 hour and overtime mode, these health boosting books have no real benefits, and I'll explain why. The best and most readily available healing items in Dead Rising are the following. Orange juice from Colombian Roast Masters in Paradise Plaza, Wine from Chris's Fine Foods in the Food Court, and Wine, Orange Juice, and Coffee Creamer from Sion's Food and Stuff in the North Plaza. Likewise, the easiest mixed drinks to make are Nectar using two Orange Juice in Colombian Roast Masters, and Quick Steps using two Wines in the Food Court. Orange Juice, Coffee Creamer, and Milk heal four health blocks, and the Mighty Wine heals five blocks. All of the mixed drinks heal six health blocks. Holding a Health 1 or Health 2 book provides you with 50% extra healing. For example, an orange juice will go from healing 4 blocks to healing 6 blocks with one of these books. You can probably see the problem with this immediately. These books take up valuable inventory space. You could carry a book like Health 1 and then an orange juice for 6 total healing. Alternatively, for the same inventory space you could just have 2 orange juices, each providing 4 healing. The problem doesn't get much better for adding additional books. If you have both Health 1 and Health 2, you get 8 blocks of healing from an orange juice. Almost a full heal. But, if you have 3 orange juices, which is the same amount of inventory space, you'll be able to heal for 4 3 times for 12 total blocks of healing. The survival book is obviously the most lucrative, as it provides a 100% bonus, doubling your heals. Once again, by comparison, we can see a critical flaw. If you have 4 health missing, an orange juice would be enough to completely top you off, and you could still have one in the bank. If you have the survival book and an orange juice, you're wasting the extra value, and the book is essentially a dead item until you get more healing items. These books would be much more meaningful if finding safe time to fully heal was difficult during psychopath battles or running in a zombie horde. But, in all of my playthroughs of Dead Rising, I have never had this issue. There's always ample places to run and hide to get a heal off, and if there's time to heal once, there's usually time to heal twice. This problem continues with the cooking book. Double duration of mixed drink effects sounds great, until you realize that you could just have two quick steps instead of quick step and the cooking book. With two quick steps, you'd get the same amount of speed bonus, barring the time you spent drinking, while also getting the extra healing capability from that second quick step. In 72 hour and overtime mode, it's always better to skip these and hold on to an extra healing item. It provides you with more options for healing both yourself and survivors and results in more overall healing. Now, this dynamic completely changes in infinity mode. In infinity mode, there are no limitless coolers of orange juice. There are extremely limited amounts of food around the mall. 
For Dead Rising's most notorious achievement, you need to survive for 7 days, and Frank's health will continuously drain at a rate of 10 blocks per 20 minutes of game time. You'll need to get tons of healing items to keep Frank alive to get the 7 day survivor achievement. Unlike 72 hour and overtime mode, infinity mode is about getting maximum efficiency out of your extremely limited food items. This turns the healing books from being horrible to amazing and borderline required. Without the health books, the difficulty in infinity mode skyrockets. An orange juice healing floor is fine in the main game, but it's unacceptable in infinity mode. Orange juice boosted by the three books will heal you for 10 blocks, which is a full heal, and that translates to 20 minutes of game time, as opposed to 8 from without. Even pathetic healing items like snacks or cookies will start to add much more significant time to the clock with the three health books. 200% increased healing is extremely valuable in infinity mode. The first steps you should take in any infinity mode attempt is to collect all three of the books. You can use the door from the security office to the entrance plaza in infinity mode since it's not welded to immediately grab health 2 from the sinister reed. Then you can double back and head to the north plaza for the survival book before finally reaching Sir Book a lot for the final health book. The three health books will provide you with 200% extra healing. This is fundamental to having an easier time in infinity mode. In summary, healing books are worthless in 72 hour and overtime mode, but they're extremely important and strong in infinity mode. There are two books related to survivors. The first is the World News Book. This is located in the Sinister Reed in the Entrance Plaza. World News gives you a 25% PP bonus to survivor related activities. This includes the bonus from initial join up, as well as the bonus for the final rescue upon return to the security room. If you're planning on doing an all survivors playthrough starting at level 1, World News is extremely valuable and worth picking up and holding on to until you've rescued the last survivor. The World News Book will help you level up faster, and that translates to more inventory space, survivability, and damage output for the rest of the game. World News makes a big difference and is worth holding on to. If you're really close to or above level 30, this kind of isn't worth the inventory space, and obviously if you're level 50, you'll get no value out of it, so drop it. The second survivor related book is Brainwashing Tips. This only becomes available after you've beaten Sean in Colby's movie land during the A Strange Group Scoop. The Brainwashing Tips book is a little bit abstract because it's very difficult to quantify exactly what it does. It says it makes survivors more aggressive, which you think could be helpful. It does feel like sometimes survivors will become too aggressive and will simply stop following you to hunt down nearby zombies. This isn't practical to getting them rescued, and it can very easily lead to the opposite effect where they uh, prematurely die. The Brainwashing Tips book is a wash as far as I'm concerned. I've had both good and bad experiences with it. Sometimes a survivor will be aggressive enough to keep themselves from getting grabbed and clear some zombies and start following me again. Other times they'll stand their ground into a horde and uh, end up biting the dust. The other flaw with Brainwashing Tips is that by the time you can actually get your hands on it, it's the early morning of the third day. You'll have rescued most of the people in Dead Rising, which severely limits its usefulness. It goes without saying, both the World News and Brainwashing Tips books become useless and should be dropped once you've completed all the survivor-related activities in 72-hour mode. This is marked by Simone Ravendark's rescue for Brainwashing Tips and her final request for a handgun in World News. These two books hold absolutely no value in Overtime Mode or Infinity Mode. The Weapon Durability book category is by far the majority of the books in the game. I'll go over the individual bookstores where you can find these books and then talk about the category as a whole. It'll just make more sense that way. First up is Contemporary Reading in Paradise Plaza, directly across from the warehouse door. Contemporary Reading contains the Hobby Book and Sports Book. The hobby book revolves around giving toys three times durability. Just a side note here, but toys are not weapons. The sports book increases the durability of sporting goods by three times. Next up is Backman's Bookporium, which is also located in Paradise Plaza. Backman's Bookporium has the engineering, entertainment, and interior design books. The engineering book will increase the durability of construction items by three times. The entertainment book will allow you to hold on to entertainment items for three times as long. The interior design book increases the durability of interior design items by three times. Next up is Everyone Loves Books in the Entrance Plaza, 
Once again, this is only available if you complete the cases. It will open up on the morning of the second day. Everyone Loves Books contains the cycling magazine and the travel book. The cycling magazine increases the durability of bicycles by three times and allows you to do a cool trick while you hold the book in your inventory. The travel book increases the durability of travel and shopping items by three times. Also in the entrance plaza is the Sinister Read, which contains the Lifestyle magazine. The Lifestyle magazine increases the durability of household items by three times. The last store on the list is Sir Book a Lot in Wonderland Plaza. It has the Criminal Biography and Skateboarding books. Criminal Biography increases the durability of bladed weapons by three times. Skateboarding increases the durability of skateboards by three times and lets you do a sick kick flip while the book is in your inventory. Alright, so there's a lot of books to get through, but let's start with the meat of the matter. One of these books will give you three times durability on every weapon that's listed on the skill page. Meaning if you had, say, a katana and a criminal biography book, you'd have the equivalent of three katanas worth of durability for two inventory spaces. For context, the katana has 20 durability, so a katana with criminal biography will give you 60 durability over two inventory spaces. If you had two katanas, you would have 40 durability over those same two inventory spaces, making the books more efficient in this regard. Now additional book bonuses stack multiplicatively. This means that you have a weapon that's listed on two separate books, you'll get three times durability multiplied by three times durability, giving you nine times durability. This obviously provides a very strong bonus. You can use this with interior design and lifestyle with a mannequin to get 9 durability worth of mannequin for 3 inventory spaces. That's a solid deal. This only applies to a handful of items, but you can actually get 3 books for further bonuses. 2 books was 9 times durability, and you can get a third, meaning 9 times 3 which is 27 times durability. This only applies to a handful of things like the skateboard. Basically, you're using 4 inventory spaces for 27 inventory spaces worth of durability. This is approaching ludicrous levels of efficiency. Now with that background info complete, let's take a look at the best bang for your buck on the first day starting a new game in Dead Rising. The vast majority of these books aren't worth the paper that they're printed on. Hobby is a cruel joke and most of the sporting, construction, and entertainment weapons are pretty mediocre. We're going for hyper efficiency. Immediately, the katana in Paradise Plaza comes to mind because it's a cool secret from the awning in Colombian Roastmasters. You can give this three times durability with the criminal biography book from Sir Book a Lot. You can also stock up on more katanas from Ripper's Blades nearby in the North Plaza. Katanas have strong damage, one-shotting all zombie types, and have 20 hits worth of durability. Buffing this by three times takes you to 60 hits of durability in two slots. It's not bad on day one. The best kept secret in Dead Rising is the unassuming mannequin. These are sort of hard to come by, only being readily available in the warehouse and Wonderland Plaza. There's a few spattered around the empty stores in the North Plaza as well. Mannequins themselves are terrible, but when you break them they split into parts. The mannequin torso is the real powerhouse here. The mannequin torso has 40 hits worth of durability and can be pocketed. It's more plentiful than the katana has roughly the same damage output and 20 more durability. This should be taking out zombies of all types with one attack, even at level 1. You can buff the Mannequin Torso with two books, Interior Design and Lifestyle. Mannequin Torso has 40 base durability. With one book, this goes up to 120 durability, and with a second, it goes up to 360 durability. You can grab the first book, Interior Design, from Backman's Bookporium on the way to the first battle with Carlito. The second book, Lifestyle, is available from the Sinister Read in the Entrance Plaza. You should be going here as part of your standard story progression on day one anyways. This is the best weapon and book combo you can have for the afternoon and evening of the first day. Mannequin Torso, with the Interior Design Book and Lifestyle Magazine. 360 durability for 3 inventory spaces. On the night of the first day, you'll get a call for the Out of Control Scoop. This is your first real psychopath battle versus Adam the Clown. Conveniently, there's three mannequins you can break for mannequin torsos in the north end of Wonderland Plaza and a save point at the restrooms nearby. Stock up on weapons and save before tackling Adam. Adam is a reasonable fight, but mannequin torsos are strong enough to do him in. The reward for beating this clown is the best weapon in the game, bar none, the small chainsaw. The small chainsaw is great not only because of its insane damage, but its ability to cleave through hordes of zombies. A real shame it only has 80 durability. Oh wait! You can immediately buff the small chainsaw using the Criminal Biography book when you pass by Sir Bookalot as you escort Greg down to the shortcut. 
that takes you from 80 durability all the way up to 240 durability. Once you use the shortcut to get back to Paradise Plaza, just zip over to Backman's Bookporium for the construction and entertainment books for the maximum 27 times durability. Why does the entertainment book work? Simple. It's a juggling chainsaw after all. Juggling's entertaining, right? The small chainsaw starts with 80 durability, and when you have the criminal biography, construction, and entertainment books in your inventory, it gets 27 times durability, giving it a whopping 2,160 hits worth of durability. This is easily the last weapon you'll ever need. Four inventory spaces is a big ask at this low level, but it's easily worth it for never having to scavenge for weapons again. You'll be able to cleave through zombies relentlessly. If you ever need a refresh on your small chainsaw, just take the shortcut to Wonderland Plaza from the restrooms and head back for a new one. Nothing is stopping you from holding two or more small chainsaws in your inventory at one time either. These respawn every time you re-enter Wonderland Plaza. Outside of a complimentary shotgun, rifle, or the real Mega Buster for a ranged weapon, you're situated for weapons for the rest of the game. As for the rest of the weapon durability books, they just aren't really useful or practical. The Mannequin Torso is by far your best option in the early game, and once small chainsaws come into play, nothing else even comes close. Barring some self-imposed challenge run, the remaining weapon durability increasing books just aren't overly useful. The cycling and skateboarding magazines are worth mentioning though. Unfortunately, cycling is just too impractical. The bike is only available at the south end of the entrance plaza. The bike having such limited availability means buffing it with a book isn't worth the effort. It could be worth it once or twice for the fun of it since you can snag the book from Everyone Loves Books on the way south. You can go through the entirety of Dead Rising multiple times, getting the platinum multiple times even, without even knowing where the bike is. Take it from me. The skateboard has much more practical applications. Just like with the small chainsaw, you can potentially get 27 times durability using the entertainment, sports, and skateboarding books. Whether this is actually practical is questionable. This is a similar problem to the healing books. You're using four inventory space for one skateboard. You really shouldn't be running into zombies with skateboards as they break in about three hits. You'll only be getting 81 durability with the three books invested, and quite honestly, you're probably better off just snagging a few skateboards instead of all the books and avoiding zombies as usual. The kickflip is pretty rad, though. The final two books are in the miscellaneous category. First up is the Japanese Conversation Book. This is found in Sir Book -a -Lot in Wonderland Plaza's second floor. This book is only used one time during the scoop Japanese tourists, which, conveniently, also happens in Sir Book -a -Lot during the night of the first day. All you have to do to complete Japanese tourists is to pick up the Japanese conversation book nearby, then talk to you and Shinji until they join up with you. Once they've joined, you no longer have any use for this book. They'll accept commands and follow Frank just like any other survivors. Drop this book and never think about it again for this playthrough. Finally is the Wrestling Book, which boosts Frank's unarmed attack power. This is found in the locked store in the North Plaza next to Chryslip's home saloon. This also requires beating Cliff in the scoop Hatchet Man, just like with the Survival Book. The Wrestling Book has only one real use, and that's for assisting in farming the 1,000 unarmed kills for the achievement Zombie Foo. Frank's special moves aren't weak, but they can have a tendency to not one-hit kill some of the more resilient zombies, and this book will help with that. If you're going for the Zombie Foo achievement, you should definitely pick this book up, and you should hopefully be close to level 50, if not level 50. Otherwise, if you're feeling like torturing yourself with a no weapons playthrough of Dead Rising for whatever reason, this is definitely something you would want to consider. But you'd very likely be better off just spamming Spitfires for that instead. That's all, and now you're a certified Dead Rising book expert. Go out there and show everyone that knowledge is power. Thanks for watching everyone, special shout out to my Patreon supporters, your support goes a long way with helping this channel grow. If you like the Dead Rising content, you can check out the Dead Rising playlist which features multiple videos on how to rescue all the survivors and how to get all the achievements for the Dead Rising series. It's hours of fun for the whole family. You can also like the video and subscribe for more Dead Rising content coming. Thanks for watching.